Now let's look at what slope represents on a velocity time graph. So I'm just going to draw some random positive slopes and zero slopes and negative slopes. And let's just see. So we know slope is the change in y over the change in x, rise over run. And on a velocity time graph, our y is the velocity. So we're going to do change in velocity as a vector quantity over change in x. And so what is velocity divided by time? Well, that is an equation. That's acceleration. It equals acceleration. Okay, so we've determined that. What if we forgot the equation? How would we figure that out on our own? We could do a unit analysis. We know velocity is meters per second uh, divided by time we know is seconds. So meters per second divided by seconds, we could take all the time we need to figure out what that is once we rearrange it. So let's try that, meters per second divided by seconds. Maybe you like to multiply by the reciprocal. We multiply the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So we'll get seconds squared in the denominator. And so you guys maybe recognize what meters per second squared is. You could say, aha, that's acceleration. So there's a few ways to figure this out. Anyway, so now you can see that this is acceleration. So positive slope is a positive acceleration. Uh, slope of zero means we have no acceleration. So that could be moving at a constant velocity. If we have some magnitude of velocity, maybe 10 meters per second or something. And then our negative slope is a negative acceleration. And so that would be decelerating. And actually the same is true in the negative range of x. So a negative slope down here would still be a negative acceleration and everything else would be the same as well. So it'd be acceleration equals zero and a positive acceleration. It doesn't matter what side of the x-axis it's on. That's just for determining the sign on the velocity. So to recap, you can see that the slope on a velocity time graph represents acceleration.